request the participants also to please come on your screens. That's nice. Nice, nice to see faces on the screen. Uh, we feel we are in the presence of an audience like this. So congratulations to all of you. You have decided uh, to select the profession of teaching. India really needs uh, talented, spirited and committed teachers. And you all are wise that you all are attending a program today uh, that would be preparing you for your CET as well as ELCT. So very good morning to everybody and welcome to this meeting hosted by EDJ College. I would just like to give you a brief background of our college. Our college is situated in the suburbs of uh, Mumbai. It's at Khar West. And it was established in June in 1969. So on this 52 years of its existence, the college has established itself as one of the leading colleges of education, not only in Mumbai, uh, but in Maharashtra, it's also got a place for itself in uh, India today. And we have our alumni who are working all over the city of Mumbai, across the best schools uh, in India, as well as abroad. Uh, when our college was re-accredited in its third cycle of NAC, we received the A plus grade. And we were also awarded autonomy subsequently. So today, HJ College is an autonomous college affiliated to Mumbai University. The Education World Ranking of 2020 has given our college the 14th position in Maharashtra and 49th position across India. HJ College today is a brand and schools are ready to absorb our students. You will be happy to know that most of our students get absorbed even before the course gets over. In this pandemic, we have been conducting all our classes online. And again, every activity of the BA course has been conducted very smoothly online. Uh, we are aware that you all uh, could be making your choice of colleges later. But still, we all are assembled here today in this meeting so that we can guide you for your English uh, language competency test, which would be taking place on the same day as your common entrance test. And that is because EJ College is committed to the service of society. We wish that the best talent uh, of aspiring teachers join the course anywhere and are there to serve society. So here we are, let's begin. And uh, I take the pleasure to introduce our first resource person here, uh, my colleague, Dr. Karuna Sinha. Dr. Karuna Sinha is a faculty of Hansraj Jeevandas College of Education now for nearly two decades. And Madam is Associate Professor. Her field of expertise is in the area of psychology and geography. She trains uh, aspiring teachers to be very effective geography teachers. Madam is also in charge of the research cell of the college and the research cell of the college brings out a publication of research papers every year. It carries out various uh, training programs for research scholars, especially the PhD research scholars who have enrolled in our PhD center, our college PhD center, as well as generally anywhere. Madam herself is a PhD search guide. And today, Madam would be taking uh, guidance of how to attempt a part of the English language uh, competency test. So I request Karuna, Madam, take over. Uh, thank you, Manjit, ma'am. Thank you so much for a warm introduction. And a warm good morning uh, to you also, my colleagues also, and to all the participants who are here today. A warm good morning to one and all. I'm sure that you have assembled here today uh, with an intent, with a purpose, uh, because you all are gearing up to um, appear for your uh, CT, where this uh, uh, English literature or English 
competency test is going to be a part of it. As you all know that this is uh, this session is uh, divided into two segments. So I will be uh, catering to the first part of it, and that is reading comprehension. Mm, before I start, I'm sure that uh, all of you must have heard about uh, reading comprehension because all of you have got different degrees to your credit and you must have um, uh, uh, attempted in many exams reading comprehension tests also. Before I start, can I ask any one of you to unmute and tell me what do you um, perceive when I talk about reading comprehension? What is uh, reading comprehension? Karuna ma'am, sorry to interrupt you, but we would yes. like to also take a screenshot of all the participants. Yes. So while they're yes. answering your question, we request everybody to please come on screen. Please come on screen, students, so that we can take. Yes. Ca uh, carry on. Please carry on, Karuna. Thank you. So what do you perceive by uh, the term reading comprehension? What is reading comprehension for you? Anybody can unmute. Radhika? I think yes, Radhika? To understand by the integrate of that content. Context. To understand? The integrate of that context. Like we already know. So we are just reading it to understand more. Okay. No, I didn't get the word uh, to understand the what. What did you say? I'm not getting the word. Integrate. Integrate. To understand the integrate. Okay. Uh, in what, the, what the t what the reader already knows. Okay, fine enough. Fine enough. What if I talk about to understand the integrate is not the exact word. If if I look at it, what exactly you want to mean by it? Okay, fine. I can still uh, take it to understand what the author wants to convey. All right. Maybe I will take it there to understand what the author wants to convey through a particular piece of you know information or an article anybody else would like to try anybody else please nobody knows all right fine enough now let me go ahead and share my screen then and let's start Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. All right. So let's have a look at when we talk about reading comprehension, because this is, this is the question which I pose to you all. So let's have a look and try to understand what exactly we mean by reading comprehension and what are the different aspects which are involved into it. So when we talk about reading comprehension, definitely it's the ability. And it is when I talk about ability, it's a cognitive ability. It's, a, it's the ability of the mind, all right? Ability to process text. And somebody said what the author wants to convey. And yes, what the author has conveyed, it is in the form of the text what he has or she has written down. The ability to process text, to understand the text. And when how can you understand the text? You need to process the text first. Decode the text, what the author has said and what you have understood. Decoding the text, understand its meaning, all right? Understand the meaning of the text and integrate with readers' pre-existing knowledge. And somebody said integrate, integrate with what? Integrate with what the author, you know, what the reader already knows about what the author has written down. So it is the mental ability to understand to perceive, all right, to understand the text, to integrate the text with the knowledge which the reader already has. And then only when the reader integrates the new knowledge with the previous knowledge, then the meaningful um, perception of the content will happen over there. All right, so this is the first what we talk aspect of reading comprehension. Then second is, it is comprehension skills learned through education, instruction, direct experiences. Now, reading comprehension also means 
understanding and it is an understanding skill is involved into it all right how do you understand the text which you are reading so skills are involved into it which skills which you must which the reader must have learned through education at different stages that's what i asked you maybe you must have heard about it you must have read about it you must have uh, attempted uh, this kind of pattern of examination at your various standards so the this involves comprehension skills understanding skills which the reader must have learned through education through instruction or through direct experiences also all right direct experiences are that you uh, have been in a formal education setup where the direct experiences have been given by the teachers and the reader has learned the comprehension skills through direct experiences also so that is the second aspect when we talk about reading comprehension now the third is it is creative all right we cannot understand simply what the author has conveyed to us every part of it cannot be understood just simply by looking at reading all right it's definitely a creative process when you said perception when i said integration when i said making sense of everything whatever the author wants or has conveyed and understanding that in the way the author has conveyed to us definitely it is a creative process also it's a multifaceted process dependent on four language skills all right it's not only that only one part is involved and the reader will understand everything whatever the author has conveyed that's why it is said it is multifaceted process where many things are involved many processes are involved at one moment of time in order to understand the exact meaning of that passage so what are those uh, when i said multifaceted how because it is dependent on four language skills i'm sure that you must have heard about the four language skills and in the next part of the session uh, more is going to be touched upon these four language skills which are known as phonology and that phonology is a branch of the linguistics which tries to understand which deals with the voices all right the pronunciation how do we uh, pronounce the words all right so we are converse we are conversing conversations are being made or uh, sound patterns which are involved into the language or in into a piece of paper phonology deals with the sound patterns then we have the syntax structure because i'm just touching a little bit about it syntax is the arranging of the words the phrases which are there in the language into meaning and, and constructing meaningful sentences and that is what do we talk about syntax structure because we cannot have half a dozen words being used and then we say that it is meaningful no it has to be a meaningful uh, sentence has to have absolutely correct uh, words absolutely correct grammar absolutely uh, correct usage of the phrases then only we can say that it is a meaningful sentence that talks about syntax structure semantics is that i'm sure that we have uh, understanding the um, exact relationships of words the relation understanding the relationships on uh, the meanings for example we have nouns in a word in a sentence we have verbs we have adjectives and they are being used specifically with some kind of uses and understanding the relationships of those words in order to understand the exact meaning of the sentence that is the semantics and pragmatics talks about we talk about that every piece of information or every uh, article which we read i'm sure that every piece of information has got some kind of a background some kind of context is definitely there nobody is going to write down anything uh, if um, the author doesn't have any con contextual framework every piece 
of article has got some kind of contextual background. So pragmatics talks about the understanding of the contextual background. So we talk about that reading comprehension is definitely a multifaceted process, which depends upon the four language skills known as phonology, syntax structure, semantics, and pragmatics also. That is the other feature aspect of reading comprehension. Then we have, uh, it is also determined by individual's cognitive development, construction of thought processes. I'm sure that each one of us do have separate uh, experiences, personal experiences, learning experiences, backgrounds, all right? So we are from diverse backgrounds. At the same time, we are uh, having diverse mental abilities and capabilities also because no individual uh, is same no two individuals are alike every individual is different from the other one as far as his physical abilities are concerned as far as his cognitive abilities are concerned so when we talk about reading comprehension how successful or reading comprehension also depends upon individual's cognitive development how well how quickly, how correctly the individual can construct the thought processes. The moment I read, how um, quickly I can understand what the author has um, conveyed through this piece of uh, information depends upon how much I have read or how much background I have about this particular um, uh, information. All right. So uh, how much rich experiences uh, I have had as far as knowing about all these aspects are concerned, because my mental ability, some may grasp it quickly, read it, read it quickly, understand it quickly and reproduce it quickly because their mental abilities are different than the other one. So reading comprehension also depends upon the individual's unique mental abilities because they are different than the two individuals, all right? Then we have the last one is that it involves two levels of processing. When we are uh, reading, can I ask, Gilles, please, can you please mute yourself? Otherwise, I'll mute you. All right. I am muted. So we talk about when reading, we are reading the comprehension or the reading comprehension uh, involves two kinds of processing. One is, give me a minute because I'm trying to shift it. One is uh, we talk about two levels of processing, shallow, low level, and deep is high level processing. All right, the moment you start, you started it, it happens at two levels. The moment you start it, you start at a low level. The moment you uh, feel that it is quite interesting one and you are understanding it. So then you go into the high level processing, start processing and immediately you are understanding each and every bit of it. But then yes, you have to start with all attention. You have to start with all focused mind when if you really want to go to the second level that is high level processing has to ha happen while you are reading all right so there these are the five main features when we talk about reading comprehension these are the main five features which help an individual to understand the uh, piece of information which the reader is trying to understand and is reading now, fundamental skills, how do we read and how do we understand it? All right. I'm sure that I know that these are the features, but there are some mental skills or fundamental skills we talk about, which are required for efficient comprehension uh, reading. All right. I think that we all have them, but whether we are using them while we are reading something and trying to comprehend that, uh, Let's have a look at which are those skills which are needed to have a complete understanding of a passage. 
Now that is knowing meaning of words. It's very, very, very important that literature um, competencies need to be there, all right? Linguistic comp uh, competencies need to be there. That is, you need to have a very rich vocabulary, all right? Where the reader will be knowing the meaning of every word, whichever is there, all right? Now, you may say that sometimes it happens that we may not be uh, knowing the meaning of some of the words, but it is always uh, essential in order to develop uh, this linguistic um, competency uh, when you are practicing keep a dictionary with you there. In order to understand, uh, when you are practicing, I'm sure at the time of the examination, this is not possible, but in order to develop this proficiency, you need, when you are reading something, keep a dictionary with you so that with the moment the reader is not understanding anything, Immediately, quickly, the uh, meaning of the word is ascertained, and that is added to the mental vocabulary, linguistic vocabulary of the individual. So the first is knowing meaning of words. Second is ability to understand meaning of a word from discourse context. All right, I'm sure that uh, participants uh, and our would be teachers. Um, student teachers, I'm sure as I said that every piece of information, every passage has got some context and we use different words in different contexts. All right, for example, I'll say that you are using beautiful to describe the beauty of, um, of an ornament. All right, but then you are using beautiful to describe some um, phenomena of nature. So you're using the same word, but the context is different. All right, so when the reader is reading, it is very essential the ability of the reader to understand meaning of a particular word in the back in the discourse context in which uh, contextual background, this word has been used by the author. That is the second skill. And third is ability to follow organization of passage and identify antecedents or that is the background and reference in it. All right. Now it is that you are ability of the reader now organization of the passage, how the passage has been organized. What is the beginning? What is the middle? What is, the com what is coming towards the end? Then how the passage has been organized. And when uh, the reader will try to understand the, uh, the organization uh, of the passage, and I'm sure that the background and the references which are given into it will be understood automatically by the reader. So it is also what has been conveyed first, what has been conveyed second, what has been conveyed in the middle, what is the concluding paragraph talking about? That will definitely give a complete idea, a complete background of the passage which the reader is reading. <laughs> Next is Sensor. Wow. All right, I request all of you to please keep on, on mute. Don't unmute yourselves, please. All right, next skill is we talk about ability to draw inferences from a passage about its contents. Now, when you follow the organization, I'm sure that the reader will be in a position to draw conclusions based on the evidences which have been given throughout the passage. All right. Yes, the conclusion, the conclusions have to be made. It is the ability, mental ability, while the reader is reading, understanding the meaning of the words, understanding the context, the background, understanding the organization. Yes, the reader will be in a position to draw the conclusions based on the evidence. All right, so that it is a mental ability of the reader to make conclusions based on the evidences which have been written down in the passage throughout. Then ability to identify the main thought of the passage. All right, what is the main thought of the passage? 
what exactly the, uh, the author wants to convey. The author wants, for example, I'm, the main, I'm just giving a hypothetical situation. I'm reading an article about the diseases these days, and I'm saying, okay, fine. Um, it is that uh, I'm making conclusions. The author has given very beautiful evidences that yes, diseases can be stopped. All right, beautiful evidences have been given over there that it is up to us that we can stop the, um, uh, the diseases from spreading. I'm making conclusions about it. So, but ability to identify the main thought of a passage. Main thought of the passage was to make people aware about how they can stop the spreading of diseases. Maybe, I, this is just a hypothetical situation. This is just a thought which came into my mind that what can be um, and how can an individual identify the main thought of a pas passage. If I am reading an article, because why I'm giving this is because we are living in COVID. Many articles are these days coming, uh, uh, are being written down by doctors and scientists that how to prevent spread of COVID-19. So the main thought of that passage can be that making people aware or educating people that what is their role in the prevention of COVID-19. All right. So it is the ability to identify the main thought of a passage. The next is ability to recognize the structures used in a passage and determine its tone to understand the situational moods now. I'm sure that what kind of structures has the author used, all right? And determine the mood, situational moods. I'm sure that all of you have heard about situational moods, all right? Situational moods do talk about that. Um, so we talk about situational moods. All right. And what are situational moods? Whether it is the happy situation, it's the sad, depressed, uh, hopelessness. All right. Uh, so if I talk about the situational mood of the con of the passage which I have read, so we talk about it is the hopelessness, depressed, stress, joy, uh, sadness. There are many, many, many um, uh, situational moods if I talk about. And if the, I will just give the same um, example I'll um, pick up over here, that the ability to recognize the structures used in the passage and determine its tone to understand the situational mood. So I said the author uh, in this passage had depicted a hopeless situation around the world due to COVID-19. That was the situational mood. And in that background, the author wanted to uh, make people aware about uh, what is their role. And these days we are talking about that um, uh, uh, people are not aware. That is why second wave, that is why we are on the threshold of third wave. All right, so the, it is the, uh, uh, the, the situation which is around and the author has depicted the mood that it is a um, situational mood. It's completely hopeless situation around. That is why um, uh, the author has written down this particular passage. So it is ability to understand that also. Ability to understand the situational mood conveyed by assertions, questions, commanding, refraining, how the, uh, uh, the individual can understand now the situational mood. So there are words are there, there are uh, you, the individual can make about or can um, make judgments about which kind of situational mood the author has used. It's definitely he can talk about the kind of assertions which the author has used over there, the kind of questions the author has used in between, uh, has asked in between, the commanding language which the uh, author has used in between. He has used some refraining statements in between so that people are not heard um, uh, what they are doing uh, when they listen what they are doing. So this situational mood can be ascertained by the kind of words, by the kind of sentences which the author has uh, used in his passage. Now, ability to determine writer's purpose, intent, and point of view also, all right? And yes, it is why, the, what, what was the intent behind it? What was the purpose of this? What was the main point of view? 
it is that also and it is we can just the last slide may when i said the overview it can be the same thing also we can replication of uh, the thoughts can be there also ability to draw inferences about the writer now that is the last one what do i feel about the writer and what do i feel um, about uh, towards the end uh, the purpose the intent was this how was was that achieved was the purpose achieved and what is your point of view about overall piece of information and at the same time what is the readers judgment about the writer all right what do um, uh, how how does the reader uh, or rank the writer's piece of writing i may say it is a fantastic piece of writing so many new things have been written down by the author in order to make people aware i may say i have i have learned so many new things today that's my fantastic job done by the author or i may say that i don't agree with the author completely whatever he has written down because so many things are simply repeated again and again by him he could have included these these and things these these statements all right what kind of inventions what kind of um, uh, um vaccinations more why this disease what could have been done in the beginning to prevent it i'm just saying this is my judgment this is my ability to make inferences towards the end about the writer so these are the fundamental skills which are required to have uh, efficient comprehension of the passage of the piece of information all right i hope i have uh, cleared it and you are clear what i have said now let me go to the next part of it now and that is types of comprehension all right now because we have to comprehend and while we are trying to comprehend what i need to comprehend all right so let's have a look that when we are talking about reading comprehension there are four types of comprehensions all right so first is the picture comprehension second is poem comprehension third is prose comprehension and fourth is dialogue comprehension all right now participants when i am talking about these four types of comprehension these are the four types of comprehension which you have to take care in your ct exam all right these four types of comprehension are going to be included in your paper of language now let's have a look at the first example of uh, picture comprehension i'm going to involve you people also now so be ready and be attentive now all right so what is picture comprehension picture comprehension is that a picture is there and uh, the individual nothing is written down over there but towards the end some questions are being given over there so finding meaning in pictures all right look at the picture critically and try to find out the meaning uh, of the picture whatever has been depicted in the picture and decode the text and make inferences quickly all right you need to decode what is being showed what is being conveyed and that is to be decoded immediately and conclusions are to be made immediately all right strengthening the reading comprehension and that strengthens reading comprehension all right now participants you are there with me now are you all there with me yes, yes ma'am Oh okay. yes, ma'am. All right. Very nice. Yes. Very nice. Now this is a small, small um, uh, um, example. Now look at there are four uh, questions given. A picture is given. Amrita, Amrita. Yes, ma'am. Some noise coming from your background. What, ma'am? Some no. Ha. Huh, some noise is coming from your background. Now it is not there. Now it has okay, stopped. now it has stopped all right coming again okay uh, now participants have a look at the picture and give me the answer of these four questions one by one i am going to read the question unmute yourself or raise your hand 
raise your hand i will ask that participant to answer okay what a look at the picture critically what are the girls at the bottom of the mountain making snowman snowman very good and when you are writing down um satya when you are writing down now the answer for your question while you are attempting the exam while you are writing down the answer in the exam you need to write down in the complete sentence of the play all right how you are going to tell me how you are going to write down the answer in complete sentence if you are supposed to write down the answer in the exams the girls at the bottom of the mountain are making the snowman very good very good all right yes what are the children about the snowman doing children are the children about the snowman are doing skating Absolutely. ice skating very good okay how many children are ice skating on the lake there are many children ice skating ma'am okay out here do we need to write the number or can we write yes. better will be better will be you can identify the exact numbers all right if there are numbers i can see the numbers are there all right so it's better if you can identify the number that's fine dear that's fine what are the three children at the bottom of the mountain playing now now look at the picture again very 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 critically all right look at the picture critically and try to answer the now questions i'll give you one minute for looking at the picture critically okay now look at this what is drawn in this picture you have four options now a railway station, a railway station. Very good, very good, very good, very good. What is the officer not doing? Look at it critically. Don't don't arrive at the conclusions quickly. All right. Look at the picture now. Talking on a phone okay. and reading. Talking on a phone. Talking. Okay. Talking on a mobile. Talking on a mobile. Talking on a mobile. Talking on a, mobile. Talking on a, mobile. Talking on a phone and making note. Okay. Somebody said talking on a phone and making note. All right. Uh, who is that? Who is that? Who has said that? Ma'am, me. Humira. Yes. Humira, the question is, what is the officer not doing? Okay, ma'am. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not talking on a mobile. He is not talking on a mobile. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. You're right. Talking on a mobile. He is not talking on mobile. Humira, this is what I said. All yes, right. Yes, sorry, I sorry. said. No, 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 no need of saying sorry, dear. No need of saying sorry. What I am saying, while this is just an example, I said, even in your exams, while you will be appearing for your exams, just have patience. Look at the picture critically before, and don't make uh, conclusions. Don't arrive at judgments immediately. Try to understand. It's comprehension. It's okay. talking about understanding. All right. Okay. Fine enough. Fine enough. Now, next question is: What is the salesman selling on the platform? Look here now. T T T T. Yes, very good. Which is the correct spelling of a mirror image word? Now, mirror image is here. D D inquiry. E A N U I. Absolutely correct. Very good. Very good. Very good. Oh, all right. The front side, the front of, the side of the officer's cabin is made up of. Glass. 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 Right. Right. Excellent. So all all are true for picture comprehension. All right. Now let's go for the next type. Now we have poem comprehension. One was picture comprehension. As I said in the beginning, I'm sure that you must be remembering. Give me a minute. I just want to take you 
So we have picture, poem, prose, and dialogue. All right. So we have finished first is picture comprehension, and we are going to the next now is the poem comprehension. All right. Now, what are we supposed to do? Is that we are supposed to read the poem. All right. And answer the questions below it. Again, I will say that what we are going to do is that please read the poem thoroughly with patience. What I said, keep the uh, keep the five features of reading comprehension in mind. Understand the words. All right. Try to make the connections. Try to make um, uh, understand the relationships. Try to understand the intent. Try to understand the purpose. Everything, keep everything in mind and read up. So I am reading for you now. I live in the town, in a street. It's crowded with traffic and feet. There are buses and motors and trains. I wish there were meadows and lambs. The houses all stand in a row. There is smoke everywhere that I go. I don't like the noise I hear. I wish that there were woods very near. There is one, there is only one thing that I love and that is the sky far above. There is plenty of room in the blue for castles, clouds and me too. All right, now let's, I'm sure everybody read it? Yes ma'am. Very yes, good. Ma now, the poem vividly describes what? A town. A town. A town. A town. All right. All right. Very good. What does the poet love most? Fair of far of, of blue sky. sky. The sky. Very nice. Far Very of good. the sky. Absolutely. Far of blue sky. Absolutely correct. What things does the poet not like? Noises. 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 All of these. 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 All of these, all of these. He doesn't like noises. He doesn't like pollution. He doesn't like crowded streets. So all of these, all right? What does the poet mean by it is crowded with traffic and feet? Yeah. Yeah. There are many vehicles and people. All right, very nice. And there is, there is plenty, plenty of room, room in the sky. There is a plenty of room in the blue. In Absolutely clear. So, so for poem comprehension, again, this is an example. Please see to it that the background noise should not disturb us. Please take care of it. All right. So again, what I will say now that you have, again, this is an example from your CT only. And this is the comprehension type of uh, the poems which usually come. And this is the way of reading the poem first critically, all right, and then arrive at the conclusion, try to understand it, and then quickly read out the questions also very, very, very thoroughly, and then try to answer them. Very good. And if you are not getting the answer, don't tick mark in hurry. Go back to the poem again, read it again, and then come back for answering the question. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Very good. Yes, ma'am. All right. So let's go now to the third example is the prose comprehension. All right. Again, this is an example from your, uh, from the CT exam. Okay. Now let's have a look at this one. Now there is a passage, small passage is given. Okay. And then some questions are given over there. I'm giving you, I'm giving you two minutes to read because I'm not going to read for you now. I am giving you two minutes to read it and then let's have a look at the questions. And I would see whether you can answer the questions or not. <laughs> Namrata? Uh, sorry, ma'am. Namrita, I said, please, those who are there around you, please ask them to be quiet for some time. Official session is going on. I request you not to do this, please. Okay, shall we start? 
Shall we start? Yes, ma'am. Shall we start? All right. Now, here also, um, as far as this passage comprehension is concerned, here we will see to it that how it is very important to know the meanings of the words. First question, because what do some people think of the thing to be the aim of education? To impart knowledge. Very good. Excellent. In part because it is saying some people think that, that the aim of education. All right. And aim also means to impart. Very good. Very good. So this is one example where I was telling you all that very important to know the meanings of the word. So that you can answer correctly. Very nice. What do others think about education? Ma'am, what is the answer of 60? Huh? The answer of 60? Six, six, sorry. Question six. number six. This yes, one. To impart, yes, knowledge. impart knowledge. To impart knowledge. All right. To impart knowledge because some people it is talking about what do some people think to be the aim? Now look at, some people think that the aim of education. So this is the first statement. So aim of education is to impart knowledge also. All right, Umira, did you get it? Yes, ma'am, yes. Perfect. Now second is, what do others think about education? Others think about education. Yes. It aims at yeah. giving knowledge to become self-reliant. Okay. Now, others believe that knowledge is alone, is not enough. Only what, what that which enables a man to earn his earn living. Earn of living. Earn for living. Earn aims at earning for living. Earning for living. Earning for living. Aims at, others feel that it aims at earning for living also. Living. All right. So reading of the passage is very, very, very important. I said, if not, then go back. All right. Now let's have a look at the third one. Question number eight. What do still other people think of education? As a means to make good patriotic citizens. All right. Very nice. Very nice. Ninth question is, what according to the author is a true aim of education? To give knowledge, make Self-reliant and so on. Very nice. Very nice. And what kind of citizens should education produce? Those who love their own country as well as, as, well as, well as other countries. As well as Absolutely other correct. Absolutely correct. Very good. I have uh, an excellent batch of participants who are very, very, very uh, attentive and are doing a good job. Very good. So Thank this was... So this was your prose comprehension. Again, an example of CTFD. So specifically, I have taken examples from CT so that you are very clear what kind of examples or what kind of patterns of, for example, picture, prose, poetry are going to be there. Now, the last is, this is just a, uh, I've taken one prose. We'll go ahead, general one. Anyways. Now, the last is the dialogue comprehension, okay? Dialogue comprehension. Now, a dialogue comprehension, I'm sure that you know what is dialogue. So, dialogue is a conversation which is happening between two people in the form of a dialogue, all right? So, based on that, you are supposed to understand that dialogue and you are supposed to answer the questions. Now, we can have a dialogue. Read the following dialogue and answer the questions given below. Again, this is from example of CT. I'll just read it for you. Good afternoon. One minute, one minute. Good afternoon. Am I speaking to Mr. Ravi Verma? Yes, Mr. Verma. I'm calling from Air Dash Couriers. Yes, you have an important document for you. Sorry, we have an important document for you from the US. Our boys have found your door. 
locked on two of their attempts to deliver it. They had left messages for you, but you did not seem to have seen them. I'm afraid not. Well, we actually get back home after nine in the evening. Is there any other place where this can be delivered? Can you send it across to my office? Where is your office, sir? I'm at Excel Techno Tektronics on MG Road. Oh, that is good. Any time before seven this evening is fine. That's great. I'll see that this is delivered before six this evening. Thanks and sorry for the trouble you have had. That's all right. Have a fine day, sir. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Should we go ahead for the questions? I'm sure that. Yes. Should we go ahead? All right. Very nice. Now the question number 16. The first one part. What is the conversation about? Undelivered. Undelivered Korean. Undelivered Korean. Fine enough. Very nice. That is be an undelivered courier item. Absolutely correct. Next question talks about the expression. I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. Express apology, fear, regret, surprise. Fear. Apology. Apology. Because he's saying that, he's saying that, that we had our people had come over there and twice try to understand it now. The context, the in which context the word is used two times, the courier people, they have come and your door was not open. So the person is saying, I'm afraid not, but this is the expression of apology. All right. Now the statement, can you send it across to my office? It is. A polite request. Absolutely polite correct. Request. Absolutely correct. It is not an instruction. It's not an offer. It's not, not a command also. Command. Definitely. It's, no, it's not a command. Because you cannot command to a person, courier person, because you have come twice. So I am just making a polite request in these. Can you, although I'm not using please, but I'm saying, can you send it across to my office? And this conversation definitely talks about, it's a polite request, all right? Yes, when does Mr. Verma want the courier sent to his office? Before, before seven or six. six. Before, before seven, seven or six. Before six, before six, six p.m. Before seven. Six. See, it is six. here. This evening. Oh, six. won't arrive at the conclusions. Without Read it. <laughs> it is before six this evening. I'm but I want that what Mr. Verma wants. Yeah. I want Mr. Verma want the courier sent to his office. Time before seven. This is one minute. Nine. One minute. Okay, one minute. Let me see. One minute. Let me see. Um, no, ma'am. Before six this evening. I'm afraid. Uh, well, we actually get back home after nine in the evening. Is there any other place? Okay. Can you send it across to my office? Where is your office? It is here. That is good. Any time before seven. Before seven. All right. Now, when does Mr. Verma want the courier sent to his office? Before, uh, before seven. Okay. All right. Okay. Now the conversation is what kind? Formal. Formal one. Okay. Now is this formal? Is this semi-formal? Is, is this informal or is this non-formal? Formal one. Formal one. Uh, is it formal? formal? One minute. One minute. Let me make it a little clearer. Now, when we are talking about formal, what is a formal conversation? Is that that happens, maybe a boss, a subordinate, uh, and maybe the head and the employees, all right? So that is a formal organization, formal. formal talks, formal work. And this is, that is the formal conversation, all right? Although this is, this is related to the work, but it is not a formal one. Formal. All right? It is definitely a semi-formal one because yes. it is related to a specific purpose. So purpose. we call it, yes, we call it 
as a semi formal one is it clear okay. student yes yes ma'am yes, participants all right. okay so these were now these were the four these were the four types of please please, please mute yourself please mute your backgrounds all right so these were the four types of comprehension we have seen the picture we have seen the poem we have seen the passage and we have seen the dialogue comprehension all right so is this clear to you all before i go to the last segment of my session is this clear yes yes ma'am yes, ma right. okay ma'am can no. i ask you a doubt yes you can please yes uh, ma'am what is the difference between informal and non formal communication okay now informal is kaha pe hota hai jaise we talk about um, my uh, i'm talking to my friend all right uh, i'm talking to my colleagues in a staff room that is informal all right that's completely informal but we are chit chatting and maybe we are discussing something uh, regarding work also that is informal one all right non formal is completely non formal um, um uh, dialogue happening all right you go you are going in a train and you are having a lots of fun and having a chit chatting you dialogue what happened yesterday what did i eat what i did so that is completely non formal and that revolves around uh, any any and uh, any kind of i will say any piece of information any occasion any situation nothing specific is there and that is totally non formal informal informal still can because as i gave you an example that you are in a situation you are at your office but you are not discussing your formal things over there all right but you are colleagues you are uh, knowing each other maybe some uh, occasion some kind of a formal i will say some kind of a formal um, occasion is there in an organization where you are talking about some official things but in an informal manner all right and yes but you are maybe in between you will have some kind of official discussion also in between so that is completely informal ones for example i'll give you one one more um, uh, example over there that uh, you are um, um, two colleagues are there and then um, uh, you want to convey something formal thing to her because tomorrow the meeting is there it is at this at the agenda is this but still because you know each other you are giving a call and you are getting involved into a conversation and then you are saying no let me tell you this is not formal in an informal manner i will i want to communicate to you that tomorrow this this and this is going to happen in the office also that's informal but non formal is it goes around and around and nothing it is all personal no situation uh, sometimes it may be one thing sometimes it may be other chit chatting going your background your childhood friends your college this all is non formal is that clear yes ma'am thank you all right all right so let me go now to the last segment of my presentation all right and that is now what kind of steps you need to take into consideration before uh, uh you start reading and you appear for your comprehension exam all right steps to make your comprehension effective all right this is just some kind of inputs which i want to give you before uh, you go for your um, english language exam uh so when you are going for reading comprehension have read the questions given below in a reading compre in a, give me a minute i just want to. in any type of reading comprehension the first thing is that before you start reading first you need to know that what kind of questions have been asked have a glance at the questions first begin with the reading of the questions because your questions when you have questions in mind so you will start reading accordingly so this is specifically from the examination point of view i'm talking about all right so read the questions given below in any type of reading questions comprehension start with reading the com uh, questions then skim in order to understand the main theme and the context of the text as a whole now you have the passage in front of you second step is after you have read the questions 
skim the content all right skim is just have again a glance quickly the moment we take up the uh, newspaper in the morning i have a newspaper what do i do with the newspaper the article i am supposed to have a, read the article i skim the first page all right and i read out the main points i read the headings and that is the skim and whichever uh, whichever um, uh, heading or whichever segment attracts me i will then go and scan that all right now since you have an article and you have a passage in any way all right you are supposed to read that you have questions in mind have a glance of the content and that will give you an idea that this passage is about what now after having a glance now scan it critically so scan is the third step when i'm talking about forgetting specific details in order to understand the text critically so scanning is very important in order to get the specific details about the passage for example like the problems reasons solutions key character characters condense essential information and make it easier for you to answer the questions all right you are supposed to scan it all right in order to understand what kind of if there are any problems mentioned if there are any reasons given for the problems which have been mentioned are there any solutions given over there i'm just these are all hypothetical situations in order to understand the key characters which are have been included which have been written down by the author over there are there any characters all right and this is all important information so condense this all information essential information and make it easier for you to answer the questions all right try to when i am saying condense try to understand the information condense it in your mind break it into different for example the problems are these the solutions are these the characters are these reasons are these the evidence is this so condense it categorize it in your mind and try to make it easier for yourself so that you answer the questions which you have read it all right next is it is very important that you need to analyze the positives and the negatives in the passage if there are it is not necessary that every passage will have some kind of positives also and some kind of negatives also not necessary maybe all something very good as i said that uh, situational mood maybe only the happiness joy um has been written out but the joy with that hopelessness has also been displayed so try to analyze the positives and the negatives which have been given in the passage expand your vocabulary knowledge of words and apply their meaning try to expand your vocabulary as in the one passage it was aim all right impart all right so the aim try to expand it the words which are written down try to um, uh, have other meaning other words of similar meanings in your mind all right and that will help you to answer the questions immediately so expand your vocabulary knowledge of words try to understand the meaning of the words and apply their meanings while you are writing down the answers all right maybe in some of uh, the comprehension passage maybe just write down in one sentence what was the intent of the author uh, um behind writing this particular passage maybe the author wants that people should know what is the exact um objective of knowledge what is the exact objective of imparting knowledge or what is the exact objective of knowledge in the present scenario of online you know we talk about online mode so expand your vocabulary knowledge of the words and try to apply their meanings understand and make inferences try to understand the passage in totality and make conclusions in your judgments in your own words in your own ways also and towards the end last is quickly go back to the questions which you have read in the beginning 
all right and answer the questions in your own words and not copy from the text if it is answered in your own words because sometimes it is just in one one statement you are supposed to answer if it is multiple choice the way it is there you have to simply tick mark but if it is there that you are supposed to answer in one statement then it is very important that you write down the answers in your own words and please don't copy down the answers from the text because that will not be considered good it will be considered and uh, um, the understanding of the reader was not not was not very good all right so that is the next the last part of it thank you so much that is all from my side as far as reading comprehension is concerned thank you ma'am thank you so thank much ma'am give me a minute thank you ma'am for the love beautiful can I, thank you ma'am can i can i can i just give me a minute vishali ma'am is yes, there tell me ma'am give me a minute just one one important just give me a minute okay now towards the end uh, i have a i have a question divya anadar uh, has just asked one question ma'am difference between formal and semi formal uh, all right uh, divya can i have you on the screen please okay fine enough now uh, difference with formal is where you have all the you know uh, you use the formal language you use the formal grammar you have the formal situation you have the formal agenda which you are forming form of, following in order to have the formal conversation all right so in form semi formal is as a semi formal is uh, bringing some kind of a formal also but then not restricting having the strict formal um, procedures all right you can use a little bit of uh, you know not the complete formal language the grammar can go here a little bit of uh, humor can be added but yes uh, maybe deviation from the agenda can be also there that is what do we usually have the semi formal but semi formal also has a combination it's both combination of uh, formal as well as some kind of uh, you know deviation also where you it is not necessary to follow the restricted formal procedures over there the norms the grammar the regulations the agenda uh, the setups and all that all right where for example you have the formal yes sir no i cannot if you permit me then only i will say this is all formal uh, norms which are usually being followed in the formal uh, conversations and semi formal yes it can be a, a light environment but a kind of a, you can use the words you can use the sentences you can um, no need of saying thank you okay fine enough if you permit that can but yes it can have some kind of a formal agenda also no need of restricting to strict formal language or the codes of language is it clear students participants is it clear divya has said yes ma'am understood yes yes ma'am thank, so so thank, so thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much god bless you all god bless you all and you i so wish much, you all so i wish you all great success i wish you all kinjal yes you have raised your hand yes kinjal uh, vishali ma'am shall i shall i send a word to um, okay to manjeet ma'am or i can give a call to her thank you karuna madam uh, uh, participants yes mayurika my pleasure mayurika it was completely my pleasure all right should we start and begin with the new session now second part of the session yes ma'am all yes, are yes, you ready yes ma'am yes ma'am Uh, Manjit, ma'am. Before I start, I would like to say that uh, uh, it's a very good uh, lot, very very interactive lot. So, um, good afternoon, Manjit, ma'am, and good afternoon, participants, once again. So we are here. So we are here. Good afternoon, begin... ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So we are here to begin with the second part of the session, 
and the resource person for the second part of the session is Dr. Manjeet Sambe. Uh, Dr. Manjeet Sambe again is a senior faculty uh, from NJC. She is an associate professor um, in the college. I think more than uh, two decades, as she has said, more than two decades experience uh, in the college. And uh, she is the method master of uh, English uh, method. All right. And I'm sure that she will be molding you into being excellent um, language teachers for um, the school, for different schools. Uh, her uh, special expertise definitely is um, uh, language. And uh, she takes uh, communi special communication classes for students um, to sharpen their language skills, uh, to hone their um, language skills and make them ready to be excellent language teachers uh, in the schools. Uh, Manjeet ma'am is associated with so many portfolios in the college. And I'm sure that, I'm sure that when um, you will be joining us, you will come to know that even Manjeet ma'am is a multifaceted personality. Um, and you would love to be a part of her class also. Manjeet ma'am. Thank you, Thank you so much, Karun. May I request you to please uh, begin with your session and over to you, please. That was such a generous introduction. Thank you so much, Karuna. So I have said what I mean, all right? I mean it, all right. Over yeah. to you, Manjeet. Now. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So... Is the screen visible to everybody? Can you see the PPT? Yes, yes, yes yeah. ma'am. Right. All right. Yeah. All right. So what we are going to do is I'm going to run you through your grammar paper. Uh, you have already looked. This is the the entire English language competency uh, test carries fifty marks, of which twenty marks are for reading comprehension. And the remaining 30 marks are for grammar, which includes, these would be broadly the topics in which so far in the past we have been seeing the questions coming. So it could be vocabulary focus, which would carry five marks, your grammar focus, which is eight marks, sentence formation, which is seven, phonetics, which is three, verbal idioms and pro proverbs, five, because of speech two. So if you will see the... Uh, uh, weightage of marks, vocabulary and grammar has got high, sentence formation has also got uh, high uh, weightage. Idioms and proverbs luckily has also got fairly high, that is five marks. Phonetics, figures of speech are less comparatively because phonet phonetics becomes a very specialized field of study. And normally it is the students who have opted for English literature and who had this as a subject are able to follow it. It gets a little, little technical, not very little. But of course, your verbal idioms and proverbs, if you are good at your language, you're a good reader. And, you know, you have an idea. You're, you're exposed to a lot of idiomatic language and proverbs. So, so this is how you have the weightage to the different aspects of gra the grammar paper. Let's have a quick uh, round a run over how it is. So let's see the vocabulary focus. As we had said, the vocabulary focus has got five marks. So under vocabulary focus, you would be having spellings, antonyms, synonyms, and homonyms. Uh, I just need from time to time an indication from all of you that you are with me. So I will ask just for you to unmute yourselves. Is everybody here right now with me? Because now I can yes, see nobody. Yes, yes, yes. 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 All right. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. You can also keep showing your uh, reactions, you know, thumbs up uh, whenever I ask. Because I feel very lonely like this. Just, you know, speaking to this screen uh, with no faces uh, to look at and no, no reactions. to. See. Anyway, so our vocabulary focuses on spellings, antonyms, 
synonyms and homonyms. Let's look at each individual. So now, if you would have, uh, you know, uh, where meanings are concerned, the uh, synonyms, for example. So what is the meaning of the word augment is given? And you will be given four choices, four options from which you have to select the most appropriate one. So as you can see in these three questions, the meaning of the words are given, uh, the meaning has been asked and the meanings are given and you have to select the most appropriate one. Uh, let's just see what is the meaning of the word augment? Who would like to try? To increase. Yes, you're right. So, yes, to increase, you're right. Uh, what is the meaning of the word fetch? This is so simple. Get, get, get. To get, get. And what is the oh, meaning of the get. words command? Order. 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 Yes. I know it's Order. very simple, but just to get you involved. So fortunately, we hope, you know, you get very simple uh, words like this for your uh, test. Now look at the spellings. You can get a word which is spelled, you know, options of different spellings and you will have to select the correct spelling, which means that you should be a good reader. You should be very familiar with the correct spellings. And normally they will select those kind of words which would have some doubling of L's or S's, R's, where people tend to get confused. So anyway, start reading, especially look out for those uh, words of yours, you know, in which you are a bit confused. So which of the following is the correctly spelt word over here? So you have the thesaurus. I hope you are all aware what a thesaurus is. Oh, ma'am, it's the second, second one. one. The second, second one. one. Yes, second one. yes, Rajkumari, you're right, Namruta. You're right, it is thesaurus, the second one. And thesaurus is a dictionary. It's like a dictionary where you have all the words in the alphabetical order and with all the synonyms given. All the different synonyms given of a particular word. So whenever you're out for any particular word, you're writing and you want a better word, consult a thesaurus more than a dictionary. Which of the following is the correct spelt word? Your second, second question. Second. Oh, second. Oh, it's again the second one. Yeah, second, second one. one. Correct. You're right. Now, no, it's not the third. It ends in an E. And if you will look at the third, there is a double Q also. Double Q. So it's the second. It's the second one. Second. And again, as I told you, they would normally, you know, select those words which would have double, some double letters. Now, antonyms and synonyms, you can be asked opposites also. Just as you're asked the meaning of a word, you can also be asked the opposite of it. Now, look at this. What is the antonym of theoretical? Practical. Practical, yes. practical ma'am. Right. It's free practical. practical. What is the synonym of the word evaluate? Assess. 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 Assess ma'am. Which means that, again, you should be aware of the meaning of a word. Only then you will be able to find its opposite. Uh, option, correct option. So, basically all of you, see to it that you read. Start reading the newspapers. Start reading. Read academic books. Uh, you read books of your content area. So, you know, you are very acquainted and familiar. Now, homonyms. We have heard of homophones. We are aware of words which are pronounced, which sound the same, but they have different spellings. Now, homonyms are those words that are spelled as well as they sound the same. Or in other words, the same word which has different meanings. So for example, you have the pen. Pen can be an area for animals. Uh, there is disturbance in my, that is why I just kept quiet. Pen is an area for animals. It can also be a writing tool book is something that we read. It is also the act of making a reservation. Address is when you want to speak to someone and you are addressing them or it could also mean the location of any place. Bark would the trees be a tree's outer layer. It would also be the sound of a dog. So these are homonyms or in other words, one word which has got multiple meanings. Now what kind of questions can you get in this? Find the homonym for the underlined word in the sentence. You belong 
he belongs to a peer group and peer has been underlined so now you have to find in the options a word that means peer in this sentence so yeah which is the correct option out of the four which are given students are you with me it is not good manners to peer in others private matters what does it mean over here it is not good manners to peer in other people's private affairs interfering in uh, any other right. to look into or yeah no yeah, yeah to interfere. Interfere. interfere whereas he yeah. belong to a peer group what does it mean over here peer group the young uh, face uh, a lot of uh, peer yeah. yeah it means friends so the fourth friends. one the young friends. face a lot of peer pressure is the correct option Now, what is the homonym of can in these given below options? I can. Can of Pepsi. Can of Pepsi. Can of I Pepsi. can't. Yeah, I. Could. You're right. Can of Pepsi. Right. Now let's go to the grammar focus. The grammar focus is eight marks. So, what is it? The kind of questions mostly you should get these kind of these areas. So there'll be questions on punctuation there'll be questions on articles conjunctions prepositions and degrees of comparison now let us see the punctuation so you would be given a sentence and you would be asked which of the following is properly punctuated look at all the four options i'm option b yes option yes. b Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely correct. Comments. Option B, as you can say, as you can see, it is in you know somebody saying. So it's yeah. correctly put the entire whatever that person is saying. That statement in the uh -huh. inverted commas. Inverted commas. Now let us see the use of articles. Okay, articles mm. A and the indefinite and definite articles. A very simple topic. Which of the following articles completes the sentence most appropriately? They left the, dash the 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 if you are very specifically talking about a particular lamp that everybody is aware of you know they left the brass lamp or you know or then there was a lamp which was a brass lamp in the and so they left the brass lamp burning or uh, you know any other very specific here it is they left a lamp burning in the lamp an indefinite okay. a lamp a lamp choose okay. the sentence with the correct article now again C. Just C A B C D and say which sentence has the correct articles in it. Option B. B B. Ma'am B. 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 Yeah. Option D. Option B. D. D. Did somebody say D? Spain. Our, on our trip to the Spain, we crossed an Atlantic. No, it is B, B as you most of you yeah. have pointed out. B. On our trip to Spain, we crossed Spain the Atlantic. Cross. Yeah. We don't Atlantic normally question. use the. in front of uh, proper nouns places yeah. but we use in front of oceans rivers you know certain geographical regions we use the in front of that. so the option b now let us look so besides articles you will have conjunctions now we are aware conjunctions are words that join to nouns phrases or to sentences sometimes together so you have both sarla dash her sister were absent and sarla and, and her sister and. were absent correct so and. sarla and indra were absent and and is the correct option you must either follow my instructions dash resign or or or, or. we know whenever or. it is either it or. is followed by or if it would have been neither it would have been nor 
so this is again something very Not simple true. you are aware of in school you must have studied the prepositions now we have prepositions which of the following preposition completes the sentence meaningfully ma'am uh, aap kya diya please. you raised your hand uh the judge said ma'am in conjunction yeah yes that slide uh first one you want divya do you want me to go back to yes. the slide yes ma'am yeah tell this in first one as well as why that option ah, not come. see because you are saying both sarla and sister if you would have not had both in front of uh, the in the beginning of the sentence then you would have said sarla as well as her sister were absent but since you are talking about both in the beginning itself that is why it is sarla and her sister divya have you understood that yes ma'am uh now let us look at the preposition the second one uh the the first one the judge set the set dash the earlier decision about set up, up. up. it is set aside the earlier decision set aside the earlier decision that means he may have taken a certain decision and then he decided against it so he set aside the Aside. earlier decision yeah decision. now the head headmaster will be dash leave on leave for two months yeah correct. on leave yeah on and for yes you are absolutely the answer on and for a you're right so you will have to be very careful look at the correct options and click on them this is simple very simple in case some of sometimes certain prepositions you are not clear so what i would suggest is look at your uh, list of prepositions normally all your grammar books give you a list of prepositions look at them sometimes you may have to memorize them. so just you know be aware of all the prepositions that follow the different uh, or they come before uh, nouns now you are aware of degrees of comparison you know that there is positive comparative superlative degree so you could have sentences where you would have to select the correct example of a particular degree they have asked. so over here you have to find out correct example of a comparative degree pick out out of the four which is the correct one it's a comparative degree australia is bigger than australia is bigger than, australia is bigger than, australia is bigger than any other one correct. is bigger than any other first one is the answer yes you're right first one is the answer ma'am yes rajkumari namrata radhika you're right Thanks. the first one is the correct option because if you will see the second one is more bigger we don't use more we are already saying more. bigger and is more big as compared to any other island that is also not correct no. australia is a big island it changes the meaning uh, i mean meaning. australia australia is a big island it does sorry not it just changes the meaning it's not a comparative thing comparative comparison positive yeah. so that is why only the first one is let us look okay. now now we come to sentence formation again i think there were five marks so no marks for this two will have generally we have imperative sentences declarative sentences interrogative sentences and exclamation you are aware that you would have imperative we know what are imperative sentences they are commands or requests declarative sentences are your normal statements which declare give some information now those declarative statements can either be affirmative or negative so affirmative would be talking positive would be a positive statement and negative would be giving you telling you no not in that sentence and you have your interrogative those are questions and exclamatory sentences which are expressions expressing emotions and normally ending in uh, an exclamatory mark so those kind of sentences yeah yes declarative means declarative sentences declarative. are your normally most of the sentences we come across are, are declarative sentences which are statements which declare they tell us they give us some information so we call them declarative because they are like declaring some information 
So hmm. most of your sentences which are either positive or negative are your declarative sentences. Okay. Hmm. Imperative sentences are post the letter, stand up, close the door, um, please uh, keep quiet. So imperative sentences are requests and commands. An interrogative we know. Now, besides the type of sentences, you can have jumbled sentences. So jumbled sentences is very easy. It is just you will have a group of sentences and you have to say which sentence will come first and second and third in the, uh, you know, the, with the thought that is conveyed through those sentences. And identify errors would be where there would be certain grammatical errors in the sentences and you will have to spot identify those errors. In fact, these are very fun kind of activities, uh, questions. Ma'am, excuse me, ma'am, one yes. more minute. Yes, yes. Ma'am, please, can you explain one more time, ma'am? Uh, yeah. Affirmative what, what, or negative? In, ah, affirmative. Yeah. Affirmative. Mm. Affirmative sentences yes, normally are positive sentences. They tell you about something. And the negative sentences normally would have sentences which have the not in it. It is not a nice day. You have not done well. Uh, that's not the way to behave. These are negative sentences, right? Negative. Okay. Negative means not necessarily negative in what they are conveying. It did not rain today. So, okay. you know, whereas affirmative would be it is raining. It's a nice book. We okay. have a class now. So, an affirmative sentence is a sentence which does not have any negative. It's neither a question nor is it an exclamatory sentence. It's a plain declarative sentence which is not making use of the negative, negative okay. words. Thank you. All right. Now let's see which of the following is the correct affirmative form. And the question is no other teacher in the school is as sincere as she is. So this is a sentence which is in the in a comparative degree form and making use of no other. So there is a negative, but you have to select the correct affirmative. That means you have to correct the meaning, correct meaning, and at the same time it will not be stated negative. The first one. First, first one, one ma'am. She is the most sincere teacher one. in the school. And the one. Yes. Yes. One. You're right. The first one. Because you should see the meaning of the sentence should not change. So the meaning uh -huh. is the same. She's the most sincere teacher in the school. And it's an affirmative sentence. Fine till here. Yes. Now yes, we are looking, yeah, we are looking at the next next one, negative. Which of the following is the correct negative form? I was doubtful whether it was you. Now you have to pick out a I negative. Sure. I was not third sure one. Was you. Sure third that one. it was you. I was not sure. Third third one. One. Was you. All right, all right. Seema, Rajkumari, Sabha. Anyone else wants to attempt? Third one. Third one. Third one. one. Everybody is sure. agrees. Yes. yes. You're right. And why is the third one the correct one? Would somebody give a reason for everybody to know? But why is the word not the negative? Meaning. The meaning of the, the sentence word not. That means the yeah. doubtful the not. becomes not sure. Correct. Absolutely correct. Uh, affirmative. See, that's an affirmative sentence. I was doubtful whether it was true. But now that same thing, the negative, when you want to state yeah, without negative. changing the meaning, I was not sure. That yeah, it was. Yeah. Let's see. Now, which of the following choices makes it negative meaningfully? Look at that sentence. He dashed complete the work in time. Cannot. 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 cannot complete it cannot. second one, ma'am. It's cannot. 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 Of course, it cannot be not can and is not. But at the same time, it is not shall not. It is he cannot. Can. You're right. Now, let's look at the interrogative sentence. We all know what's an interrogative sentence. It's like yeah. a question. Interrogative question. sentences are questions. Now, it was a marvelous sculpture. You have been fine. It wasn't the third one, ma'am. Um, second one. First one. Okay, I want everybody to give me your responses. Then I will tell you whether third it's one, third, third one. Third one, ma'am. Third dad. one, ma'am. It, it was a marvelous sculpture, wasn't it? Third, third one. Second one. Third one. The first one. First what was one. the marvelous sculpture it was? Now, see, it is asked 
interrogative that means it should be asking a question which is seeking information okay, okay. question tags normally ask for confirmation it's a it's a marvelous culture isn't it when i ask it's a marvelous culture isn't it it means i'm just asking for confirmation and if it is what a marvelous culture it was it's more like an exclamatory sentence second one was it a marvelous culture is your question hmm? it was a marvelous culture was it a marvelous sorry all right so was it a marvelous culture is the interrogative form because we have to convert that into a question which of the following is the correct exclamatory form he was glad when they understood what mm -hmm. he wanted can you tell me the answer of the last one interrogative the previous one yes ma'am yeah raj the previous one says was it a marvelous culture that's the correct option you're asking a question not a question tag the okay. interrogative form Okay. Now look at this exclamatory. Third one. Iteshi. All right. Any anybody else also? I want others also to try. Saba. The first one. First, first one. one. Oh. And third one. Understood what he wanted. Yeah. Yes. So. Third one. Yes, yes, Vishal. The third one. How glad he was when they understood what he wanted. Because if you will see, only this sentence is conveying the meaning correctly and has got the exclamation, exclamatory mark. Oh, if only they understood what he wanted. Whereas he was glad. He was glad. That's not there. When he understood how glad he was. When he understood, or when he understood. or they understood what he wanted so if you will see only the third sentence is the right option the third one is that all right rajkumari have you understood this yes, third one yeah yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma okay okay the assertive which of the following is the correct <laughs> assertive form third one oh handwriting is third one but handwriting is beautiful third, third one ma'am how handwriting is beautiful yes because assertive it has to be in the positive uh, this it should not be negative so isn't her handwriting beautiful actually is trying to imply that oh how beautiful her handwriting her handwriting, her handwriting is beautiful yeah. but handwriting. then it's not an exclamatory sign how beautiful is her handwriting would be the correct exclamatory but it is asking for the assertive yeah now assertive. now look at the jumbled sentences see the jumbled sentences look it's there are four sentences you have to say in what is the correct order 4132 e option 4132 ma'am option yeah. number b 4132 d correct 4132 yes this is very simple he had fever he consulted the doctor he consulted the doctor gave him medicines the doctor he felt he felt that yeah correct so that this is nice very easy and fun Yes, now identify the errors now you will be given sentences where there are some grammatical errors and you have to identify what the error is so he had waiting for you since morning it's a wrong sentence definitely you have to pick out is it misuse of a preposition it's misuse of a conjunction misuse of a verb or misuse of verb verb ma'am he had been correct. he had waiting. been waiting for you waiting yeah. for you since or it could also be he was waiting he morning. was waiting for you since morning morning so it's a misuse of the verb see the second one the meeting will be held in the girls school The meeting was held at the girls' school. Okay. Uh, D. Apostrophe. It is misused. Actually, the meeting was held at the girls. Yes. At. Misuse of akanja. At. It's the misuse of the preposition. 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 At. At the girls. 
normally when do you use the preposition in when it is you know an enclosed kind so you say he went in he jumped into the pool or you, know, you don't say in in the girls at the girls at the pool he was held at now we come to phonetics where you have phonetic transcription accent stress and intonation pattern now this normally is you know where students who have a background of uh, english uh, at the at the ba level could of course be comfortable of course it's not necessary it also depends on how good you are in your so let's see let's have a look let's look are you aware of the phonetic transcription we have the international phonetic alphabet if you were consulting if you are consulting dictionaries you normally come across the phonetic transcription are you aware so can you pick up pick out the correct one for the first one but the which one the first hiteshi amrita second first one second one minute one uh, i'm getting very different ones somebody is saying the first somebody is saying second somebody is saying third am i right i heard three responses Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. What so, is the third one? The third one is birth. Birth. The third one is a. Uh. This uh, inverted e is a. Uh. And the first one, b u t. I mean, the very first one is boot. Boot. It's the second one. The second one is but. Ah, but. uh look at author tell me which is the correct one this may be challenging for those who are not familiar with the phonetic transcription but luckily they have put just i think fourth one second one and fourth one last one the one. The, oh, the last one. one actually the last one or or that is the c with the two uh, like the uh, colon with it and th th and a uh, the a uh sound the schwa the last one author we don't say normally author okay the american accent will have author but again if you will see the first one the r is up it's not down so it's author the fourth one now i'll just show you a slide of this phonetic transcription have you ever seen this have you seen these symbols mm. no ma'am no. for the very first time no ma'am all right no, ma yes uh, ma'am all right. first time yes ma'am okay. some of you may have been students of uh, literature english literature anyone from english literature over here yes ma'am yes ma'am so when you did did you have uh, phonetics in your uh, paper did you have a paper of phonetics uh, in your yes we had it in our communication skills yeah right so this is even when you are consulting your dictionary for the meaning of words it helps you in the pronunciation of words so if you can it's something new that you would be learning just try to familiarize yourself so see it's given over here for example here read so when it is e you have got this i with these uh, can you see this can you see my cursor over here so yes, it is yes, yeah similarly this is sit i so it's i so here now this is book book u or uh, hindi u so it's written like this but when i want to say i would like to come to u it's prolonged so you would have this colon similarly you can see all the others you have all the consonants m f p b w n then when you are saying sing m mm, m okay we have ang aha in our hindi so this is ang see how the ang is shown over here n n with this over here and similarly look at ch ch church ch it has got this t and this where is sh has got this symbol so it has got certain symbols which have been borrowed from other languages but this is a phonetic script if it is possible for you try to memorize this 
and then try transcribing certain words in the phonetic transcription. When you go on Google, you will get all the necessary help. This carries, I think, about one or two marks. So if you are very particular, you don't want to miss out any marks, just try learning this phonetic transcription. Okay, ma'am. Now we go to accent. Have you all heard? You, yeah, please please mute yourself, Rajkumari. Please mute yourself. Sorry, ma'am. Yeah, if you have too much of noise in your background, I request you to keep yourself smooth. Now let us look at this accent. Okay, English is a stressed language. Stress, not the stress we are talking about, the tension or stress. It's a stress language means that our words in English have you know, are broken in such a way that certain syllables in a word would be stressed and emphasized and some would be unstressed. Now, a word is normally made up of different syllables. Have you heard about this? Are you aware of syllabification of words? Students, are you there with me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma now, those who are, again, students of English literature, you may have learned this. Syllab syllables. Any word is made up of, it's either one, two, three, four, five. You can have five, you can have six syllables in a word, or depending on the length of the word. What determines the syllable? Again, I don't want to overwhelm you with this information. I'm just generally telling you, uh, words will have vowel sounds in them. So those vowel sounds determine the number of syllables that are there in a word. For example, if I take the letter I, 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 capital I, it is just one syllable, one syllable, one sound, I, the uh, vowel sound. If I take even the, uh, the word I, this E-Y-E, -E, again, it is just one syllable because it has got only that uh, vowel sound of I in it. I. If I take a word like Red, it has got only one syllable because it has got e eh in it. R and D, two consonants, but it has got red. E, eh, the e eh vowel sound. So how many vowel sounds are there in a word? So many are the syllables. And English language has got certain rules that certain syllables would be stressed for that word to be meaningful. Okay? And if you don't stress the word correctly, uh, you won't stress at the right syllable in the words, the word would not be understood by a native speaker. Okay. Now, as you can see, there is this word present and there is present. Can you see that there is a difference in this? The accent is like a, it's like a comma on the top. Yes. Now, now do you know the difference between the words present and present? Present is to be uh, to pre uh, to have presence and oh. present is to show something. Exactly. So present is the verb and present is a gift. It could also mean the present tense, right? The tense, present tense. So if you will see, we say present and that is why the accent comes after sent. The, the emphasis is on present. Whereas when we say present, the emphasis is on pre. Pre, present, and that is why the accent has come after pre. Similarly, if you look at photograph, just see photograph. Can you pronounce the next word that is following photograph? Photography. Photography. Yeah, one minute. Namrata, what did you say it was? Photography. Uh, and somebody else also said. Photography. 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 Yeah. Photography. Photography. Yes. Photography. It is photography. It is not photography. It's photo. See, the oh. accent is coming after T O, to, after the sound to. So it's photography. You will emphasize, you will elongate to. Photography. Okay. Look at the look at the text word. Who will metabolism? Metabolism. 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 It's, it is it is metabolism. 
It is metabolism. Metabolism. is being emphasized. And bullism. You don't say ballism, you say bullism. So, again, this is how familiar you are. We, we normally don't learn. We just hear the correct pronunciation and we come to know where the correct, uh, where the accent should be, where the, uh, you know, stress should be. Again, there are rules. If you want, you can again go on the net, Google it out, look for the rules. There would be a lot of rules and there are a lot of exceptions. You know, there'll always be rules and exceptions. And that's how, that's the only way you can know. Or generally, if you are good at the way you enunciate, pronounce the words of English, you would be able to make out. So now over here, uh, a question. Which of the following is the correct accent for the word examination? The second B. one. B. Examination. Examination. Yeah. It's D. It's D. Examination. Examination. Examin examination. Examination. Look at psychology and tell me which is the correct. B. Psychology. What is the answer? Examination. It is examination. Examination. You're stressing on the examination. Examination. B. The first for the first one, it's D. For psychology, it is A. 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 B. B. Man, psychology. Is it psychology? Is it psychology? Psychology. Psychology. It's psychology. Psychology. B. B. Correct one. B. Yes. We hear people saying psychology. Psychology is not the right word. It's psychology. 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 Yes. And with aspiration, as somebody said, psychology. Yeah. All right. Let's go to our next. So that was about the accent. For accent, just go for stressed words. Stressed words in English. You can just go on Google and look. If you normally look at the dictionary, if you're consulting a dictionary, if you have a hard copy of a dictionary, with you, then normally the dictionary would show you the accent sum. Of course, there are so many words. You should just be aware how these words are pronounced correctly. So you'll be able to pick out the correct accent. Remember that the accent would always follow the, that syllable which is uh, emphasized or which has to be spoken loudly, elongated and um, emphasized in, a, in any given word. Ma'am, what will be the option for psychology? Uh, it is B. 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 Psychology. Oh, Psycho Psycho is psychology Psycho and you don't say logic you won't say psychology it's a psychology Psycho the o l o g takes the o uh sound the g now we go to intonation again every language has got a uh, an intonation that is rising and falling many a times you may have have heard People saying, oh, he speaks in a monotone. That means there's just one tone. The person does not either rise, the voice does not rise or fall. You don't see any expressions in a person's voice. So that becomes now intonation. Intonation can be falling intonation and it can be a rising intonation. It can be fall rise. It can be rise fall. So, uh, the, again, there are certain rules in the English language. Let us look at these rules. So you have the falling intonation. Falling intonation is normally whenever we are making statements, when we are, there are statements, declarative sentences, there are commands, you're asking somebody to do something and there are WH questions, you know, how, where, who, how, which, when, the WH questions. And then of course you have your confirmatory question tags. When you're asking your question tag, for confirmation and exclamations. So you would have sentences like, you know, you would have sentences like, nice to meet you all today. She doesn't uh, live here anymore. So anymore, it's falling, okay? Uh, leave it on the desk. Leave the papers on the desk. 
post this letter. We don't say post this letter. We don't raise our voice. We say post this letter. Shut the door. Keep quiet. So if can you see the tone falls in the end, then it also shows that my sentence is complete. Students, are you there with me? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. So the falling intonations means that a sentence is complete. Normally, your sentences, commands, even your questions. Where do you live? You don't say where do you live. Do we say that? Or we maybe do just to be dramatic. You may say that. Where do you live? When did you come? So there's always a falling intonation. When do you have a rising intonation? When does the pitch rise? With yes or no questions. Okay. So your yes or no questions could be: Do you like your teacher? Do you like your teacher? Hmm? Yes. Uh, may I borrow your dictionary? Okay. So when you are expecting a yes or no answer, those questions would normally have a rising tone. When there is a question tag and which is asking a real question at the end, okay. For instance, we've met already, haven't we? Supposing we, I want to just make a statement only for confirmation. We've met already, haven't we? Haven't we? The voice is falling. But if I say, we've met already, haven't we? Means I'm asking, haven't, have we, or have we not? So here my pitch is rising. Okay. Now let's see the next one. When do you use the rise and fall intonation? You make use of the rise or fall intonation when you want to give people choices. Are you having soup or salad? So are you having soup or salad? So the voice rises and falls. Uh, when you are talking about a list of things. Today I went to the market and I bought apples, grapes, oranges and some mangoes. So while you are listing, it's going on rising. Grapes, this, that, it's rising. And finally, and this. So there is a rise, rise, rise and fall. Uh, if it's a, you know, um, unfinished thought. Do you like my handbag? Well, the leather, well, the leather is nice. It means I'm not so happy. It's nice, but, but something is missing in it. So, you know, and some unfinished thought of mine, I'm not articulating it, but the person who hears knows that I'm, I have some unfinished thoughts. I've not stated it. So I would say, you like my hair, uh, leather bag? Somebody is asking, well, it's nice. Uh, nice. So, you know, and um, what was the meal like? Somebody is asking. So you will say, mm, the fish was good. What does it mean? When you're listening to a statement like this, the fish was good. Good. There's a but good. in it. Ah, exactly. So it's an unfinished thought, which I've not articulated. And then there could be conditional sentences. If he calls, ask him to leave a message. Unless he insists, I'm not going to go. So again, if there are conditional, if, if kind of sentence. So there will be a rise and then there will be a fall. Maybe you have never paid attention to this, but when you are doing, you know, a course on phonetics, many a times you will have somebody, you know, they are reading out the text. And the text is given to the students and immediately they have to go on putting rise, fall, rise, fall. And they have to show these kind of symbols. Only. I don't know if you have ever done that exercise. Have you ever done that? Anybody? When you were doing your course, your BA? Not yet. Okay. All right. Maybe you, you do it when you're doing your master's. So anyway, you have the rise, fall. You have the fall, rise also. You have the fall and rise intonation. So when a person is hesitating, uh, you would say, so you're willing to confirm? Somebody is asking you, are you willing to confirm? And you would say, I suppose, I suppose. So you're going down. That word suppose has got, you know, the rise, the fall and the rise. I suppose then you didn't see him on Monday. 
I don't quite remember. Now see the word remember. So you broke up the word remember only into Paul and rice. That is how you have. It shows hesitation. It shows you're not very sure. Reluctance. And sometimes you may say it to say something very politely. Should we copy? Like now you all will ask me, ma'am, should we take down? Or do you think it is allowed? Allowed. Now the word allowed has been broken into low and high. Falling and high. So allowed. Again, it shows a polite way of asking. So that is a part of your, I mean, these are normally the four. There are many more, but I don't think you would be expected to know more than these. There is, let's look at the kind of question that can come based on this. I have one link over here if you want. I will just put it in the chat box. I hope it comes. And, you know, you can go. Once again, it's there. If you go on Google, there'll be a lot of uh, places where you can learn about the intonation. And, but whenever okay. you go, go for, you know, Cambridge, uh, British Council, go for these reputed kind of sites. Okay. Yeah. Now look at this intonation. Which one will be the correct intonation pattern while saying the sentence aloud? I had sandwich fruit and juice for breakfast rising rising falling, falling. yeah falling. correct whenever we are listening rising out, and we, falling both. yes yes you are right. where are you going rising rising where are rising ma'am where are you going rising. falling no, no, no. Falling. Falling. falling questions falling. all the going going sorry 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 where falling. are you going falling. what's your name where are you going how come you are early today Falling, falling. Yes, falling, falling, sorry. Yeah, right. So as I told you, if you want to see the four kinds, when do you use rising, falling, fall, English language normally makes use of the fall, falling in intonation in all our normal uh, sentences. But then of course you have rise for your yes or no questions. When you're listing out, then rise and fall when you're listing out things. Fall and rise when you're in doubt, when you want, you're hesitating or when you want request something. Just look at it more clearly, peacefully. Right now I'm just talking about it. Take your time, go over it and try to understand. Now we have idioms. Idiomatic language, we all are aware. What is the meaning of idioms? Idioms is normally a collection of words, a number of words, which individually would mean something else, but when they are put together, they mean something so, for example, he took notice of my remarks and improved his performance. Which is the correct option for it? Followed, noted, neglected, or followed. 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 Yeah. Followed. See, yeah. Noted also comes to your mind. But what mm. if you look at the sentence, it says, and he improved his performance. So he means that he followed it followed, and as a result, followed. showed an improvement. Yeah, followed. The situation is improving. But we are still not out of the woods. What does it mean? Difficulty. Yes. Difficulty, man. So see, correct. So the words out of the woods normally would have mean the forest or something. But the expression, the idiom out of the words means difficulty. Being Still being in Different. difficulty. Look at this. He burned the candle at both ends for his final examination. Exhausted himself. He exhausted himself. Exhausted, exhausted himself. himself. Yes, yes. yes. To burn the candles, both the sides means, you know, remain awake, sleep late, wake up very early. And as a result, you exhaust yourself. The meeting was put off. Postponed. 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 Not postponed. Not postponed. 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 There is no word like preponed. We, we Indians have, you know, invented a word like preponed. There is no word like preponed. No word. And uh, on time and after time, of course, after a year, the meeting was put off. That doesn't mean that. So, idioms and phrases, again, if you are well read, if you read and you're very familiar, you'll be able to instantaneously, immediately pick out the correct idioms. What do you, what do the underlined proverbs? The question can also come in this form. What do the underlined proverbs in the following sentence 
mean? She tried every possible means. He tried every possible means. Every tried every possible means. No stone unturned to find possible means. Correct. Correct. Tried every possible means. Yes. Tried every possible means. Now let us look at proverbs. Uh, please, please mute yourself. Choose the proverb that is closest to the meaning to the statement given below. So these are the different ways in which you could have the questions. If too many people are involved in any work, it won't be done well. So the meaning is given. Now you have to pick out the proverb. Too many cooks. Too many cooks. Third one, man, the too broth. many cooks. Too many the broth. cooks. Spoil the soup. Correct. 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 That's yeah. right. So the meaning of the proverb is given. You have to pick out the proverb. And now the last one is figures of speech. You have learned figures of speech when you were in school. So yeah. again, we. I mean, this is what. We have noticed that over the past years, these are the kind of these are the kind of figures of speech that have come. You know, a simile, metaphor, alliteration, personification, repetition, climax, anticlimax, hyperbole. I hope you're familiar with these. Sometimes something else also can come. So you know, just familiarize yourself with all the different kinds of figures of speech that are normally taught in schools. Because you were in school for for your English language till the tenth standard, so yeah, let's have a. Are you all familiar with these figures yes, of speech? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. They can be very tricky, though. Okay, figures of speech can really confuse at times. So now here, figures of speech. Alexa, switch on the fan. What is it? Personification. Personification, ma'am. Personification. Everybody says it's personification. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else but with a different that. response? Ma'am, what is the apostrophe uh, figure of speech? Can you explain? Yeah, this is apostrophe. It's not personification. Apostrophe is a kind of a personification. Apostrophe is when you are addressing. You are addressing either a non-human person, maybe a, a pet, something that's non-living. Now, Alexa is definitely a non-living person whom you've given the name, non-human, a machine. So it could be non-living. It could be a person who is not present right now here in front of you. So you could be talking to any of your family members. You say, "Oh, Dad, why did you do this?" Okay, supposing Dad is outside. Uh, your father has gone out and you know something that you are so you're addressing somebody who is non-human who is not present who is dead okay so for example uh, i would say tagore i wish you could see how badly the students are singing the national anthem so now i'm talking to a person who is dead okay he may be or he may not be famous you could talk about a dead person you know and address that person it's an address now why it is an address i'm calling out alexa switch on the fan so it's not just personifying it is a form of personifying but i could have said alexa switch on the fan that would be a personification i am addressing and saying alexa switch on the fan that is why it's an apostrophe yes ma'am okay now let's see the second one he came he saw He conquered. Climax. 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 The earthworm is a farmer's best friend. Metaphor. Yes. Metaphor. Metaphor. Why is it a metaphor? Who would say why it is a metaphor? It's an indirect direct comparison between uh, earthworm and indirect comparison. Correct. Best friend and earthworm. Okay. okay. Farmer's best friend and earthworm. But it is not said the earthworm is like a farmer's like best friend. Farmer's best friend. It said the earthworm is the farmer's the farmer. best friend. So it's a metaphor. I I think that's all I have on my slides. Yeah, that's it. I'll just stop the share. So what I have take, done is I have run you over all the different kind of 
questions that can uh, the portion your syllabus you know what you expect under grammar and it carries 30 marks together 20 marks for your comprehension and so not to worry they are simple relatively simple at the same time because they are simple that does not mean it does not require preparation now as you saw something like personification and apostrophe as i told you it can be a bit tricky it's not as easy as it seems sometimes there are two or three figures of speech that come to your mind when you look at a particular so anyway do your preparation try to familiarize yourself even with the phonetic script it's just learning something new that would help you whenever you're looking at pronunciation of words we are not native speakers of english so we tend to mispronounce the words it's always nice to know the correct pronunciation of words where to put the stress in the sentences in your words for sorry not sentences so people say product and people say product Okay. Uh, produce and produce there's a difference produce the farmer was very proud of the produce of his farms and the farmer was able to produce good crops this year whenever you're using it as a verb the stress and the pronunciation of a word becomes different when it's used as a noun its pronunciation becomes different so these are the normal kind of things one should be aware of the english language that was of course what i was talking about was phonetics in phonetics since you also had the rise and fall and fall and rise rising tone falling tone uh kinds of sentences meanings of words correct spellings conjunctions prepositions degrees of comparison simple but at the same time you do require it now do you have any queries do you have any doubts any questions uh no ma'am uh, but one thing i would like to share ma'am yeah. uh, the experience learning with you was really awesome because i have been struggling how to prepare what to prepare and then i got the whole uh, right. information uh, from you ma'am and really glad to have the uh, this, this session thank you ma'am yeah definitely edg college uh, takes as i told you edg college takes us as a service you know that we provide all aspiring teachers we are really, we all are blessed ma'am really really blessed uh, to have thank you service. thank you rajkumari for the appreciation we are happy that we can be of any help and value to our, to the student any queries any doubts remember the day you will go to appear for your cet exam this exam would be following long so it carries with uh okay so your sentence what was that sentence uh what was that sentence let me go back switched uh, uh, you left a uh, lamp it's on the lamp the room. Room. yeah normally if it would have been pl plural we would say he he left the lamps he left the lamps burning in the house. yes you would have used he left the lamps he lit the lamps in the house the lamps naturally it can't have a because now it's plural one plural it's not one so he lit he lit the lamps in the house okay thank you thank you everybody thank you, so if you have thank i'm you, glad it was helpful mayurika thank you ma'am thank, ma thank you so much thank you. okay amrita mm -hmm. uh, have a great day ma'am thank you bye bye uh yeah bye see will there be a gap between the two i'm not very sure but in case you have certain queries do put it on the whatsapp group which veshali madam has made she will answer this query this query which was there just now will there be a break anishya you can put this query on the whatsapp okay anishya i'm for lct we have one and a half hour no 90 minutes ah uh what i would suggest is just put i am not aware of the duration the time duration just put it on the whatsapp group so that you are well informed about it. you know you should not have even any query which is unsolved or unanswered so please put your duration and the gap the question on the duration and gap on the whatsapp group vishali madam will answer that anything else anything else related with grammar 
or then I can close this uh, meeting. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. 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 Wish you all, all the best the for your preparation. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, and all uh, of you have a nice and blessed day. I mean, uh, yes, yes Rushali. Ma'am, if possible, can you send the video to Rushali? Ma'am, uh, so we I, can prepare it. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you.